Warning, Prospect Watch is not your average hockey podcast, and that's okay with us. Our goal is to introduce you to stars in the making from all over the world. They may not be household names yet, but we assure you they will be soon enough. Welcome to Prospect Watch. Hi guys, welcome back to another Prospect Watch, a podcast that focuses solely on the discovery and promotion of some of the best young talent in the game today from all reaches of the world. I'm your host, Lance Green, and of course, joining me as always is my co-host, Steele. Steele, how are you? I am doing awesome, my man. Um, We are going to get into our continuation of our series where we're doing the top five in each position for this upcoming draft. What do you think, Lance? Are you excited? I am. I'm, I am. We've already hit the centers. We talked about the wingers and we've talked about the top goaltenders available in this draft. So what is left but uh, defense, right? That's right. And according to goaltenders, um, our resident goaltender um, included, defenseman mm-hmm. is one of the most important positions on the ice. And as you so deftly pointed out in your article Uh, that kind of goes along with this series in your top five defensemen article, you point out that there's um, two different schools of thought here for a defenseman, depending on how teams want to go, right? So teams can pick a offensive defenseman where the defenseman is going to be more up in the play, in the offensive play, uh, playing more of a winger role than a defenseman role um, type of situation, or you have the type of player that goalies like including our resident <laughs> host here <laughs> where the defense uh, player stays at home and and plays defense first and then offense second you know only when right. capable or available or when when the green light has been turned on by the coach and with that in mind um we've gone through our top five in each of the positions defenseman is the is the final spot here and lance i think we've got two really good Here, what do you think? Uh, I th- I think so. I uh, interested to get into it to see uh, who makes your list. And um, you know, as always, guys, I did do an article already about this. So uh, if you haven't read it already, it should be in the uh, uh, LinkedIn part somewhere. Uh, yep. You can always click on that and take a read of that because I really break it down even more why I chose you know, each defenseman in, uh, on my list. So exactly. And, and, the, and this, it's kind of unfair because I already know Lance's list and he doesn't know mine. So it's, it's a, it's a little bit unfair, but that's okay though. So, and, and as always, we're going to follow like what we did in the previous, um, uh, series where we're going to start with uh, number five first and work our way to number one. Sure. Okay, so Lance, would you like to kick it off with your top five defensemen for the upcoming 2023 NHL entry draft that'll be happening here uh, real soon here uh, in the uh, uh, in the June, uh, July month uh, or the beginning of or I'm sorry, the end of June, uh, the beginning of July right. is when this will be so um um, Lance, I'm very excited about this. I can't wait to get in this. So let's let's jump in with your number five. Sure. Um, as Steele was saying, now I'm an old goaltender, so my list is who I think are going to be the best defensemen out of this draft. Now, as as a goaltender, I like my defensemen, like Steele said, to take care of their own zone first. Uh, be defensively responsible, and then jump up into the play uh, when all that is done after that, you know, making sure that you take care of your own end first. So with that in mind, my my uh, mantra that I always like to follow is, uh, remember, a player can score 50 goals a year, yeah. but if he's on the ice when his opponent scores 60, is he really being that effective? All right. And with that in mind, my 
Number five defensive prospect uh, is Luca Cagnoni. Uh, now he plays for the Western Hockey League. Uh, he plays in that. That's a tough league for sure. But he plays for the Portland Winterhawks. And uh, he's 18 years old. He's a left-hand shot. Uh, he's he's a little on the shorter side at 5'10 right now. Weighs in 172 pounds. But uh, can move the puck pretty well. Uh, is defensively responsible. But he can also be uh, offensively uh, minded as well, uh, seeing that he, at the time I wrote the article, was scoring at a point-per-game pace. Yeah. Uh, at, at that time, he had 15 goals, 45 assists for 60 points in 60 games played. Um, but like I said, I do like a defensively responsible defenseman. So uh, he is a career plus 45. That's through three parts of three seasons with the Winterhawks. So um, I really like this guy. I think he's a good two-way defender. Um, he could get a little stronger um, for my likings, but uh, that, that'll that come. He's only, you know, 18. So when he hits about 20 or so, you'll, you'll start to see that hopefully. But um, I, I think he could be a top four defender in the NHL when it's, when it's his time comes. So. Okay. Okay. So you're basically saying that your number fifth pick is kind of like a project where, you know, you, you think that um, because he's defensively minded, you know what I mean? But he's a little bit on the diminutive side, you know, you give him a couple of years, he's going to, you know, eat his chicken and drink his milk and, you know, maybe put mm -hmm. an inch or two on and maybe put a couple more pounds on, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think he's going to be a second round talent. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't think he's, you know, obviously going to play in the NHL next season, you know. So he may go back to juniors after this year. He, yeah, he may yeah. not. Who knows? But, um, you know, he's not a guy that, you know, is a top five talent overall. In the or so to get before he gets there, for sure. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I looked at him. He was one of the guys that was made my top 10 cut. You know what I mean? Um, so mm -hmm. um, I, I looked at him as well, too. And I really um, enjoyed reading about him in your article and looking at the stats and then also seeing the the, the, the little cut of video there that you have to, to see the highlights of him. Um, it, he is a um, – I can see why you would have him at number five because uh, I, okay. I would – yeah, I, I mean, I, I looked at this young young player as well too. So, I, I went also from uh, the American uh, side here uh, from from the uh, USHL. My number five from the Chicago Steel uh, is Chris Abel. Um, he's a right hand shot defenseman at 18 years of age. He, <clears throat> excuse me, is six one and 194 pounds. And and I gotta tell you something. This this young player is committed to Ohio State for next year. Okay, so that means he's gonna be playing with some top tier talent. Okay, uh, you and I both have touted the Big Ten. We've we've touted uh, going to schools like. Uh, in the Big Ten, you know, Ohio State, uh, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, all those types of schools. This is a young player, Chris Abel here. Um, he's more of a D-man. He's more of that type of player that you like, okay? He's a, he's a plus 10, okay? So he, he's, he's a guy that takes care of his end. You know what I'm saying? He's not a goal scorer. He's he's an assist guy. He's got, you know, he's played in 50 games. He has one goal and 15 assists, right? But he's a plus 10, okay? And he only has 16 penalty minutes. But he's he's got that, he's a project. Do you know what I'm saying? He's got all the tools, and I don't think he's going to be a first-round pick. You know what I'm saying? But I think he's definitely going to be one of those guys that, He's probably uh, at least on some uh, teams' boards, maybe like second, third, maybe round for this young player. Uh, I think because he is a project, but he has all the tools, he has the size, and, and he's going to Ohio State next year, which is a great program and a great opportunity for him to get better. So that's who I have at number five is Chris Abel. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I like that he's a right-hand shot uh, defenseman that's uh, highly coveted uh, now in this league. Um, you know, and it does it is coming from the Chicago Steel, which, you know, have developed some great talent yep. uh, over the last couple of years. So, you know, those guys are going to be snatched up by great teams like Ohio State uh, when they see them. So we will see what he uh, has in store for the NCAA next season. Awesome. All right, sir. Well, who we got for number four for the great guardian of the blue paint, Lance Green? All right. Well, my number four pick is uh, Lucas Dragasevic. All right. Say that five times fast. Dragasevic. Um, he is a set. <clears throat> he is a 17 year old right hand shot defenseman who is currently playing in the WHL for the Tri City Americans. He's six foot two and 181 pounds. Um, he's on this list purely off offensive abilities. Now, I I like him, but um, he needs to work a little bit more on his defense, but his offense is spectacular. Uh, through 61 games played at the time I wrote this article, uh, Lucas scored 15 goals and 53 assists to achieve 68 points on the year. All right. Um, he's, he's scoring at uh, 1.11 points per game. All right. That's pretty darn good. Now, what I really love about this kid is his long, accurate outlet passes. He's able to stand behind the goal and chunk that puck up to a winger's stick blade, um, you know, that's ready to pass into the offensive zone. Uh, he makes for some great offensive chances, and, uh, you know, that is something that I think most NHL executives are going to be drooling over. And, and, you know, he can also cycle the puck pretty well on the power play as well. So I really like this guy. He's got to focus a little bit more on the defensive side of things. Again, he is playing in the WHL with ungodly amounts of highly talented offensive players. That could be uh, problematic to his uh, minus standings right now. It's not a huge, you know, right. he's not a huge minus player, but, you know, uh, I am a goaltender. I would like to see him get a little bit better defensively. But uh, if you watch, you know, some of the clips and uh, if you've been watching some of his games all year, he's just an exciting player to watch for sure. And he's got the size to go with it already. So Exactly. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. More on this player later. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, I'll tell you what. I, yeah, like I said, more on this player later. Because this is one of the names that we matched on. All right? So I'll just give you that little hint right there. Okay? But for me, my number four for me is a player from the Gulf Storm um, playing for the OHL and Cameron Allen um, at 56 games played. He is got four goals, 19 assists for 23 points, 66 penalty minutes. He is a minus 22, but let me tell you something, man. This guy was the OHL rookie of the year for 2022 as a D man. Okay, I, I don't know about you, but that's pretty significant if you ask me. Not afraid to throw his body around. He's a little bit on the smaller side at 5'11", right? But he's a bigger 5'11 at 100 and like almost 90 pounds. You know what I'm saying? He he is a, a right-hand shot defenseman as well, too, and he's 18, okay? He sees the ice really well with great anticipation. He has good hockey IQ. This guy can skate. OK, uh, it's good to see a defenseman who can skate and he's got a real good slapper. OK, um, he's got good outlet passes and not afraid to throw his body around. This is my number four pick is Cameron Allen. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, I, he's he's another one that may go either late in the first round, maybe second round, maybe. Yeah, I think he's going to fall. Um, to the second, um, yeah, just based based off of his drop in production this season, and it's really 
odd to me and a lot of scouts this year. Uh, he was so highly talented coming into this season that he was thought to be uh, projected to be one of the top defensemen in this draft. And he, he kind of fell off again. Like you said, he was, you know, uh, OHL's rookie of the year. A uh, lot of people were watching him and, you know, just hasn't had quite the season. Uh, I don't know if the team's, you know, letting him down or some te players have left from the, you know, his team to not be, or he's, you know, counting on a little too much, playing him a little bit too much uh, off of his production from last year, uh, making him less effective. I don't know. I haven't spent enough time watching uh, the storm this year yeah, to really yeah. get that uh, answer for you guys. But I think he will still be a value pick. He he has shown sparks. He has that ability that people are going to want. Um and I, I think he, he's going to be able to turn it around. I think next season he'll come back and have a stronger season. Uh, he is a guy that's probably going to be in the in the second uh, round somewhere. Yeah, yeah is, maybe. Is my thinking. He, he might, yeah. He, he he might go late first round, but I'm, I'm, I'm more seeing him second round, maybe even third. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just see a lot of offensive – too much offensive talent this year yeah. in the first round for teams to pass by. I think they are going to get a good quality defenseman if they need that in the second round. I There's agree. quite a few of them. I, I agree so. with you 100%. You know what I mean? With with the amount of wingers, centers uh, that, yeah. that that's going to be present in this year's draft, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be tough to be getting a defenseman in the first round. So uh, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, putting this list together thinking that these were going to be top five defensemen that were going to be picked in the first no. round no, no, no because look you, you know defensemen are a bit of a different breed like goalies but defensemen take a little longer to develop i fear uh, i feel i'm sorry um because it's a more of a difficult game for them because not only do they have to be defensive responsible but they have to take care of those outlet passes they have to start the plays they're usually the quarterbacks on the power plays for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Uh, defensemen are relied on a lot more just than for, you know, blocking shots. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? And and <clears throat> it takes a little longer for defensemen to develop than it does for a winger. Because let's face it, it's a lot easier to go out there and skate and score than it is to go out there and shut guys down. Well, I think it's a big jump for defensemen. Um you know, the league today is more apt for scoring, less holding and grabbing and, right. and hooking than it used to be in years past, of course. Um, it's more open ice game. You can you can obviously do a lot less than you were used to be able to uh, back in the day. So it, it opens it up for the offense. And like you said, you know, defensemen are going to have to to learn how quick, you know, some of these guys in the NHL are, you know, uh, to be able to jump up and, and, and take on the, the likes of the Connor McDavid's who blow by 10 year pros in the NHL will <laughs> easily make a rookie look, look absolutely dumb I mean, or, yeah. or just not, uh, not relevant at all. You know I'm what I mean? You. So, um, you know, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time for a defenseman and, and you want to make sure that you don't rush them, uh, if they're not absolutely ready because, you know, playing some players like that in NHL point. can can just hurt you and, yeah, and hurt your progression. Yeah. yeah. If you if you get out there a little too early and you're not ready for the pressure, you're not ready for the for the, you know, whatever's going to be thrown at you, the ice time or whatever, the speed or whatever. It's a little bit different thing than when you go from the AHL to the NHL or when you go from, you know, WHL to even the NCAA. It's, it's you know, bigger, stronger, faster, always going to be, you know, bigger, stronger, faster the next league up. You know what I mean? So. Right. All right, sir. Well. Ah, uh, what do we got here for number three, sir? All right. So this is possibly my best, my favorite defender and who I think is going to be the overall one of the best defensemen out of this draft. Uh, I really, really like this kid. He yeah, buddy. checks all my favorite boxes for a defender. Uh, Eten Moran is in my third slot. Um, like I said, He's, he's possibly my favorite defender in this draft. He's 18 years old. Um, he plays for the McCotton Wildcats of oh, Quebec yeah. Major Junior Hockey League. 
Uh, he's a left-hand shot, two-way defender who excels at both ends of the ice again. Um, you know, so like uh, like others on this list. But um, where he differs from a lot of people on this list is he brings that physical aspect of the game that NHL teams covet, right? They need that guy to, to stand people up on the blue line and put people on their pampers. And, 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 uh, and separate this them guy from does. the puck. Yeah, separate them from the puck all day long. He's six foot tall. He's 183 pounds. But uh, as I said, you know, in my article, uh, if you ask the wingers that he stands up at the blue line after they skate back and find their way back to the bench after colliding with this kid, uh, <laughs> they're going to swear they were hit by the team bus. All right. He <laughs> is an impressive, impressive force. Open ice hits, yeah. hip checks, uh, takes you off the puck, takes you out of the play, regains it, and pushes the puck back up the other direction quick. Right. Um right. That's this rare, season. Lance. That's rare to see a defenseman yeah. at that level in the queue being able to hit the guy, separate him from the puck, get the puck, and make the pass so that his team can advance into the to, into the opposition zone. Uh, I'm here to tell you, man, this kid's impressive. Yeah, he's really impressive. Um, he's recorded at the time I wrote this article now, 17 goals, 40 assists for 57 points in 60 games played this season, all while averaging a plus 21 average. Um, he has all the he has all the intangibles, right? And I think this is why this kid has been shooting up people's draft boards uh, as the season progressed. He is just a, a highlight reel every night and uh man i can't say enough about this kid i i really hope that uh, he goes to a decent team and he gets a great chance at uh making a pro club one day because i can't wait to watch him i'm with you on that too um i was very excited when i got to read your article uh and then when i got to him and i was like wow man this moran kid holy smokes Okay, yeah. Mm, yeah, can we have that guy on the team? Uh, pick him. Yeah, yeah pick him. <laughs> it's funny that you say that your number three pick is your most favorite pick in in your top five because I have gone and done the same thing. Right. Because my number three pick for me is also my favorite player in, as far as defensemen in this in this whole shooting match. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's the guy that I think exactly does ex what, what Moran does for you. He does for me, he checks off all the boxes. Okay. And I'm talking about, and this guy is actually 26th ranked um, right now in, in the prospect pools. You know what I mean? Um, uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, but for me, number three, for me and my favorite defenseman in, in this draft for this group is Oliver Bonk, okay, playing for the London Knights from the OHL, okay? This kid, I'm here to tell you, six foot one, 185 pounds, another right-hand shot defenseman. In fact, I'll just tell you right now, every single one of the players on my list are right-hand shot defensemen, every mm -hmm. one, right? They're all 18, and they're all 6'1", 6'2", about 180 to 190 pounds, across the board, okay? Every single one of the players on my list meets that criteria. They all have that size, and they all have that, you know what I mean? They don't have to grow into it. Do you know what I'm saying? With the exception of uh, of, of of Allen, who's 5'11", you know what I mean? He's the only one. Everybody else on the list for me is tall, okay? But I got to tell you something, man. This kid has got great awareness. He it, just like you said, Lance. He checks off all the boxes. He's got great outlet passes. He can skate. His hockey IQ is off the charts. He's got great anticipation. He was also the OHL Rookie of the Month for December. Okay, and for, as far as I'm concerned, he's the best overall defenseman. Uh, he he's able to. With 60 games played, he's got 10 goals, 25 assists for 35 points. Okay, all this while being a plus 10, I'm sorry, plus 13 um, on the year. 
okay, at the time we, we did this, right? That's in 60 games, a plus 13. So he's getting it done offensively. He's responsible. He's 200-foot responsible. You know what I'm saying? Where he jumps in when he can and scores and makes the assist in the pass when he has to, but he plays defense first. So that's who I have at number three, Oliver Bonk. Well, Bonk, you know, plays on a great team. I love the London Knights. I yeah, love the prospects. Uh, I believe Dale Hunter is, yeah. should be getting a look at an NHL coaching job sooner rather than later. His yeah. win percentage is through the roof. Um, you know, he brings in some great talent there. And, uh, you know, of course, he was a great NHLer as well. Um, and, you know, this is just another player that he – you know, has honed the skills there and uh, helped get to this point where uh, he has, you know, the possibility of getting drafted. So uh, good on the London Knights for developing yet another player. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll see Bonkin at the next level. So Hopefully for sure. Easily second round, I would say for this guy, for me, easily second round. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll have to see what you know. What teams, like I said in my article, what teams are looking for at the time. You, you can rate a guy as high as you want, but uh, the teams that are drafting them are the the ones that got to be the deciding factor because uh, they're the ones that need to fill holes that they have in their lineup. Exactly. So if they have exactly. The, if they have a group of individuals that are already playing that same position in the same style, then they they may look to something else. And you know, that's true. Yeah, that's like true. Ranked higher than others, then it doesn't matter because they have to fill their holes. So. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. You know what I mean? And and so, but, okay. Well, there you go. So that's that's our third one now. So let's move on to number two on the list for you, sir. Or would you like me to switch and we do me now? David, David Reinbacher. Um, now, he is an 18 year old Austrian born player standing at six foot two and 187 pounds. He is that coveted right hand shot defender. And, uh, you know, he's been quite impressive this year. Um, these two players, like I said, uh, that I have above my favorite player in Moran, um, I believe have higher ceilings. All right. I believe that they could yeah. be top pairing defenders one day, yeah. uh, where Moran might be a, maybe, you know, top four, second, second pairing guy. Second pairing. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Right. So that is why I have these guys ranked higher because I think they have a higher ceiling. Now, uh, Reinbacher is playing in Switzerland's top league, the NL. And, uh, you know, he's a kid that's holding his own among men right now. Um, he's a, he's demonstrated that he's not afraid to use his size. Uh, he's knocking opponents off the puck, like we said before. Uh, and he's being able to jump up into the offensive side of things, uh, going stride for stride with some of these offensemen. Uh, and he's got a great, accurate, hard shot. And, uh, you know, I, I really like this kid's ceiling. And uh, if brought over, it may take a year to get used to North American style play. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think he I think he has a lot of the intangibles teams will be looking for. So I, I 110 percent agree as these last two for me are matches to two of the names that are on your list. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Right. So Lance, your number two was David Reinbacher, right? My number two is Lucas Dragievich, right? So that's why I said, yeah, we're going to get back to that one again, right? Playing for the WHL, you're right. He's playing in a great group of, of folks here. Uh, I, I got to tell you, he, he's right now currently on a 26 game point streak. OK, I mean that he's got the size, he's got the shiftiness. I mean, just watching this kid skate around with the puck and without the puck. Right. I mean, I, I like the skill that he has. He's got a, and, and you're right. He's got a big time shot. OK, he does have a. I mean, and, and it's, it's really nice. You know what I'm saying? And he's got good hands. Every every bit of 
uh, uh, footage that I saw of him displayed really good hands and good passing abilities. All of his passes were crisp passes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can hear, and that's one of my favorite things in hockey is to hear that first pass out of the defensive zone, hitting the, the stick of the, of the winger up ice and hearing that, that, that loud smack sound when the, when the puck makes contact with the stick. That, yeah, that's a good, hard outlet pass that's on the money. You know what I mean? I love hearing that sound, right? This kid's got that for me. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I've already talked about him. I, I yeah, really yeah. like him. I think, uh, you know, he's he's going to be having a lot of people drooling for sure because uh, a lot of guys, a lot of teams – want that offensive forward to really yeah. run their power plays and everything like that. And uh, he's definitely one that can do that at the next level. And he's already got the size. He's six, two, you know what I mean? He doesn't have to grow into it and he knows how to use his size. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? For an 18 year old and, and also being a right-hand shot defenseman, do you know what I mean? And he knows how to use his size. He knows how he, he knows where to put his body. Do you right. know what I'm saying? And and so, man, I'm here to tell you that that's who my number two is. So there you go. Well, that's a pretty good one, yeah. <laughs> so now here we go. Drum roll, please. Mr. Lance Green's top five defenseman number one for Lance Green is Axel Sadin Pelica. Oh, All there right. you go. Now um, this guy is pretty impressive. I think he's going to go in the first round. He's an 18-year-old right-hand shot defender. Again, this this draft is loaded <laughs> with right-hand shot defenders. Yep. Um, he's playing currently in Sweden's top professional league, the SHL. Yep. He's five foot eleven, 181 pounds. Uh, he is signed to play through uh, the 24-25 season over there. So that could be a deciding factor for a team that is in need of somebody today or tomorrow, you know, next season. Um, so <clears throat> that is that is uh, something that some teams are definitely going to be able to wait and others may not want to. And, uh, you know, at, the, at that point, the SHL stats for me aren't that impressive. He is very young, uh, playing in a big open ice, and uh, he's got two goals and three assists for five points in 22 games played in the SHL. But his uh, play against his peers, people his own age, in the J20 uh, top yeah. junior league there, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he's he was very dominant. He was 15 goals, 18 assists for 33 points in 28 games played. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he was averaging a, a plus 16 there. So, again, um, this guy... Can do it defensively, but he is very impressive offensively as well. Uh, I believe he has the hands and accuracy that very few skilled NHL forwards have right now. Okay. Um, I think he is a threat in the shootout competitions as well. So, oh, yeah, that's a, <coughs> that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good I mean, point. He is, he is a threat. So, that's my number one. So there you go, man. Lance is number one, Alex uh, Sandine Pelika. And I got to tell you something now. Um, I, I looked at him hard, man. I looked at him hard because he's also the number one ranked defenseman in a lot of the lists mm -hmm. out there. Okay. But here's the thing that throws me is that he signed until 24, 25. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to get a young guy like this, you need to get him over here sooner rather than later, you, as far as I'm concerned, okay? And having to wait until after the 25 season before he can even come over here, eh, that that's a big flag for me. Is, is he one of the – I mean, he's the top-ranked defenseman in, in a lot of lists, and I can see why, and, and I wouldn't – wouldn't, wouldn't mind having him on my team either. You know what I mean? But, but the whole, that whole, that that's that whole like Mitch cough thing too, where mm -hmm. he's signed to, till 25 and that, I mean, would he be a great addition to the team? You betcha. 
but I mean, you have to wait two years before you can even talk to the kid. I, I have a hard time with that, especially if I'm going to be drafting them. If I'm going to be spending a draft pick on somebody, I want to be able to at least talk to whatever happened in my camps that yes. kind of thing, that kind of stuff. So that's why I shied away from Axel, and I went with my number one, David Reinbacher, um, playing for the Clottons uh, and the NL. Just like you have him there for your number two, I have him for my number one, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this kid definitely, in 46 games played, yeah, he only has three goals, but he has 19 assists, uh, uh, and, and he's a plus player. So... He, you can't go wrong with that. Playing in a league of men, okay, six foot two, 190 pounds, right hand shot defenseman, checks off all the boxes. Played for the Austrian team during juniors and played well. Played very well, okay. Um, he never gives up on the play. He's got a great motor and good vision. Um, he, he's he's savvy with the puck, okay. That. I like defensemen that know what to do with the puck, okay? I, it's okay if if you're keep away, but if you're doing well, making good decisions with the puck to advance the play, that's what I think uh, David Reinbacher does. And <clears throat> I, I would be all over this guy. This is who I have as my number one top defenseman for this year. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at the um, the – top players in that league you'll see a lot of um great ex nhl players and oh, different yeah. stuff like that there's a lot of players in that league um so that are impressive and um you know he's he's definitely one of them at, at such a young age so um uh, still i think we got two great lists here and uh, all these guys are going to be good pros yeah. i think some sooner rather than later but uh, yeah. you know yeah, I, I think we got a good list here. This is a good crop of defensemen, even though the offensive side of thing um, in wingers and centers is heavily loaded in this first round. I think you, right. most teams will be able to pick up a great defenseman uh, that'll be there for eight to ten years, I think, on their teams uh, in the second round. I, I'm with you on that because... Uh, we've we've discussed at length um, doing this series that with the amount of offensive skill available um, in this year's draft, I mean, you have to go, you're, you're going already into the, you know, 30s in the rankings before you even start getting to some, I mean, you know, yeah, some of these guys are ranked nationally, like uh, Ryan Backer's ranked 15th, uh, Dragievic is ranked 18th, um, Bonk is 26th, Cameron Allen is 31st, right? They stop after 32. So, but your boy Axel is ranked 13th. Mm -hmm. And as far as all that, you know what I mean? So the, it's, it's all depending on what teams are looking for, like you talked about in your article. So by the way, you got to go check that out at steelflyers.com. Um, go check out Lance's article about top five defensemen. That'll go along with this part of the show. And, uh, I tell you what, Lance, I, I agree. I think we've got a really good list here of young players that will be impact players for whomever uh, selects them in the draft uh, this coming year. Yeah, for sure. So, Lance, why don't you tell the folks where we can find you, where we can reach you, and read all your great stuff? Sure. You can always find my stuff at the uh, Elite website for this type of stuff, steelflyers.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Lance.Green39. For sure, for sure. You got to come and check out the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and get all the great stuff from the Hockey Writers, Inc., the Steel Flyers podcast, also the Prospect Watch, and all the great work from uh, Perla Wisdom and also from Peyton on the radio as well, too. So be sure to check out all the great stuff at Steel Flyers All Sports Network. This has been Prospect Watch, where we've done the top five defensemen, and this is our series of top five players for each uh, position that will be available in the draft in 2023. I'm Steel Flyers, your co-host. You can find me on Twitter at SteelFlyers52 and all the great work at SteelFlyers.com. Thank you very much for watching Prospect Watch. We'll catch you all on the next episode. Thanks, guys. <laughs>